Judge Eileen Cannon failing to rule after a hearing today. Trump's lawyers won the right for a full hearing on whether the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago violated Trump's rights. Judge Eileen Cannon gave them that hearing instead of dismissing it out of hand, forcing both sides to spend a lot of time, effort, to prep and present their arguments. And even as she then, when the hearing happened, seemed to dismiss Trump's arguments that the warrant was too broad, she said she had the, quote, hard time seeing any problems with the warrant, she still didn't actually rule on it. It comes on the third and final day of hearings that Cannon scheduled on various issues related to the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case, issues that most legal experts argue have no merit other than to delay the trial. A trial which, by the way, has no trial date and Cannon has uh, delayed indefinitely at this point. Out front now, former Trump White House attorney Ty Cobb. So, Ty, when you look at this, okay, so I mean, I don't know, how do you see this? This is, uh, it's, it's, you give her credit for obviously seeming to, to not be a fan of this or she should have ruled or she never should have had a hearing in the first place. Well, she should never have had a hearing in the first place. It's hard to give her credit because we're now at the stage where um, the Trump's lawyers have thrown so much at the wall to see what would stick. You know, they're now throwing just water at the wall uh, to see whether she's interested. The fact that, yeah. the fact that she even gave him a hearing on this, um, highly irregular. Um, you know, she doesn't, she didn't see any merit to, to it in the argument. Most judges didn't see any, wouldn't have seen any merit to it on the papers and they would have just ruled um, it's a silly, it's a silly thing to have a hearing on. Uh, in essence, it boiled down to, you know, well, you let them search in every room. Well, these are documents; they could be anywhere. Right, right. And so, the, so in other words, the hearing itself shouldn't have happened. But so she, you know, while it, she appeared dismissive about it, she did not actually even mm -hmm. rule on it. And she's got more tomorrow. This is there's a lot on the table here, right? There's this, whether the special counsel's appointment is even constitutional. Another hearing uh, that that experts say shouldn't have happened gag order on Trump and whether to place one. D is it possible that she doesn't rule on any of these? It's very possible she doesn't rule on these. I think, yep. you know, the, I mean, she's in a hard place for herself. She either has to disappoint uh, Trump, uh, which uh, obviously is difficult for her, or she has to um, make a decision that um, uh, supports Trump, but will get her removed from the case when it goes to the 11th Circuit. So um, I think Failing to rule, following her name, seems to be her new last name. You know, Eileen Cannon failing to rule. Uh, she <laughs> will not rule. Uh, and once she does, if she rules favorably for Trump, she's going to get reversed and spun. Right. So it's in her interest not to. And I, I misspoke. Today was the final day of hearings. Right. We didn't get rulings on them. So I saw this uh, the other day uh, on Twitter. I wanted to see what you thought about it. This was a professor at George Washington Law School. So he was saying that they're floating the idea that if Cannon rules that the special accountant uh, a counsel's appointment is unconstitutional. And I know you're saying she probably won't rule, but if she were to rule that, that the, the steps from there might be a bit counterintuitive. He was suggesting the DOJ should not appeal, but should have the U.S. attorney in Florida refile the same charges in a new case, hope that it gets assigned to a different judge, not Cannon, a new judge, and then the special counsel prosecutors who have already been designated as special assistant U.S. attorneys in Florida for this case, they stay on the, the new case and continue their prosecution because they're up to speed. Is that... A path that would work? So I think that is a path that would work. I don't think it's a likely path. Um, I guess because you don't even have a ruling at the first well, part of it, but for, even if she Right, did. for two reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, even, say, she did make the ruling and they, so she ruled the special counsel appointment, you know, um, uh, unlawful, uh, and uh, the Justice Department wanted to try to expedite things, you know, could take that course, but she's already done her duty to Trump. Uh, by pushing this case off to the point where it's not going to get tried before the election. Right. Uh, so the Justice Department, and the stakes would be way too high for the Justice Department not to appeal the special counsel um, decision if they invalidate right. it. Keep in mind there are other special counsels out there. David Weiss is out there on the Hunter Biden case. Right. Uh, so the Justice Department would uh, would probably proceed to do that. I, I think um, Randy Eliasson, uh, the professor, posted, yeah, yeah um, I think it's a reasonable solution to a problem, uh, but I don't think it's the solution the Justice Department That they would, would actually go with. Right, I understand the precedent of it. You have to you have to have that formal appeal. All right, so there was a late night counsel, uh, filing from the special counsel that we got to see some never before images, never before seen images of the actual boxes and documents at Mar-a-Lago. They're like spilled all over the floor. And they did this to show, to push back on Trump attorney's argument. Uh, Trump's attorneys are saying, well, because you, the orders of the boxes content was changed uh, it, it, you can't build a defense about it because you don't know when stuff was put in the box. So they're submitting this to show that, well, of course, the order was changed because we had to pick up all the papers off the floor. 
I guess is basically part of the argument. Does, where does this go? So I think that I would refer to that as the give me a break filing. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it's it, Trump's argument is so silly. Uh, you know, box to box integrity should be enough, you know, for, for those documents, particularly the ones that were all over the floor. Um, but, but, you know, the theory that it should be in the first third of the box versus the second third of the box, I, I have a very hard time in my wildest imagination understanding how that could be a defense. Right. <laughs> all right, Ty, thank you. Great to be with you.